It is your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships that fund so much of what we do here in this operation. And then we're more than happy for the TV show after it's aired live, then be leaked out onto the web to tens of millions of people. That's our goal. And I owe that great opportunity to be in the film Waking Life to Tommy Pallotta, the producer of the film, and Richard Linkletter, two guys that I've gotten so busy over the years I never even get to uh, reach out to and contact. By the way, remind me to try to call Tommy Pallotta on those numbers we have again today because the number I have for him is an old number. And Tommy called me the last time I talked to him about three, four months ago. I was in a UFC fight because Joe Rogan had invited me down to Houston. And, uh, well, I was already in Houston protesting the Fed, and, and Joe had heard that, so he invited me over to the UFC, and Tommy called me while I was um, in the middle of watching the fights, and he could barely hear me, so I haven't talked to him then. I'm not name-dropping. I'm, I'm, like, now communicating with my old friends via the radio show, because I know he listens sometimes, and his friends do. So, Tommy, I think about you all the time. And I, I bet he even came to Southwest, Southwest, and I always miss his phone calls or don't call him back the few times he's called. So now I'll just communicate to you here. You're awesome. What a smart guy, too. He's an amazing guy. So is uh, Rick Linkletter. That's now what this radio show has turned into is a public communication. You know, I want to try to break the cycle here on this radio show. It's a great radio show. Very informative. But I just don't want to get up here and just bray at people uh, calling the New World Order criminals and calling all the different systems criminal, which is true to a great extent, but we know that. I want to try to have a calm, focused, reflective show. I tried this yesterday and it didn't happen because I got off into brain-altering vaccines that literally attack your tissue. And I... I dream of actually just calmly covering all the news. I dream of actually taking hundreds of your phone calls. And I've only attained that dream a few times because I'm always going into the same paradigm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the phones up for first-time callers, in, at least in the first and second hour, then everybody in the third hour, on any subject, any question or comment, no matter how good the caller is, I'm giving them one minute. And then I'm giving myself 30 seconds to respond. We're going to be taking your phone calls. When we come back, I'll give you the number. We are live. L-I-V-E. And transmitting out globally on over 100 AM and FM affiliates. Global shortwave, 100,000 watts worldwide. WWCR, number one on the audio streams and podcasts for talk radio. Via many metrics like Shoutcast and others at Infowars.com. Streaming video at PrisonPlanet.tv and, of course, channel uh, XM166. Thank you so much for tuning in to this hour of InfoWars. I want to do something a little bit different today, and you see me struggle with this every day because there is no program director, there is no radio consultant, there is no manager over Alex Jones. And quite frankly, some days I wish there was, just because they're there to challenge you and to bounce things off of you and to point out what could be better. Because some days I hear my radio show rebroadcast, and it is the essence of powerful information and oratory skills and the incredible guest and the breaking news. There's a reason this broadcast now reaches one way or another, over 15 million. In fact, I've got to bump that number up conservatively. It's more than that. 15 million people a week. But then I realized, wow, that's an incredible responsibility. And I tend to get frustrated with the information. I tend to get angry after I read this stuff all day and all night and then finally get on air. I get angry and frustrated because there's piles of it. And I figured out, psychoanalyzing myself, that at a subconscious level, 
I get so frustrated and angry by the news that then I start to basically spin out of control and just get angry and nasty. And can't argue with success. It's just that I personally want to move more towards being calm and focused and really deliberative in what I do instead of sometimes not being as effective because I'm in a rage. I knew this was coming for a long time. They're launching all sorts of nuclear-powered satellites now that have reactors, little uh, systems on board that if they do ever come back into orbit or out of orbit into the atmosphere will, will make Chernobyl look like a health food. Now they're announcing drones to circle 24-7 that are nuclear powered. And you know they're going to crash. You know they're going to have malfunctions. It doesn't matter. The system says DU's good, Chernobyl's good, Fukushima's good. They actually say, eh, I know I talk about this at nauseum because it's total proof of the elite being out of their minds crazy. Radiation levels are going up everywhere. Alaska, Hawaii, San Diego, from Fukushima. It's still belching plutonium and uranium out into the atmosphere, into the water, all coming towards North America. And the EPA and FDA just raised the levels last year, as you know, of more than 20 different isotopes. In one case, they raised an isotope, the level they say is safe 100,000 times what they previously said was safe. And, and I know I've talked about that hundreds of times on, on air. And I've got all this new news. But it, it, it's just things like that prove how dangerous these people are. And now they've got all the, quote, environmental eugenicists like Mombiot and others in the London Guardian and our own newspapers running around saying nuclear power is the answer and radiation is not bad for us and Ann Coulter says it's good for us and, and we need to build local nuclear power stations to, to power all our towns. All right. It's just seeing this reckless desire to hurt the planet and hurt humanity, and the people doing it are on a high horse calling themselves conservationists and environmentalists, lecturing everyone all day, saying pay money to these consortiums, these carbon trading companies that are publicly owned by the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, Ted Turner, Warren Buffett, Bill Clinton, Al Gore, heavily invested Barack Obama, to tax us on breathing, to tax us on our gasoline, our, our, our electric power. They're setting up a post-industrial world for the general population while building compact reservations of high-tech systems. And they're hurting our military, letting them use the depleted uranium. And they just don't care. And so I'm saying, what's coming next? They know D use a death sentence, a long, painful death sentence for a military that uses it not just those that have it used on them. The system knows that nine out of 10 reactors are leaking because they're old and rotting. They just don't care. Their answer is, let them eat cake. They put radioactive isotopes in the so-called fluoride compounds, mined out of sulfate mines, into the water. I mean, this is so beyond any science fiction movie I could ever imagine. And then I see some of the general public and they really think I'm crazy. 
And I guess in a way I am. I've used this analogy many times because it's one that's so true. If, if you or I were teleported back a thousand years ago to the heyday of the Aztec kingdom in central Mexico, to where Mexico City is today, and they were sacrificing people every hour on the hour, sometimes thousands a day. Sun comes up, kill a few people. Sun goes down, kill a few people. The priest class made their money off then hanging the human bodies in the square and selling them for meat. If you, to, to other humans, if you were to teleport yourself back and you'd studied as an anthropologist the Mayan dialect and you could communicate to that Mayan culture dominated by the Aztecs, part of the Mayan culture, and you said, this is wrong to chop people's hearts out and sell their flesh. It's wrong to torture yourselves. Uh, the, the priest class on a routine basis would take hallucinogens and take big, long pieces of yarn with pieces of glass in it and draw it through their, their genitals to have hallucinations of pain, worshiping skull and snake gods. I mean, this is beyond Hellraiser. This is real Hellraiser stuff putting hooks in themselves, all of this. They would look at you and say, you are crazy. And all of them would laugh at you, see? So you would be insane. If you could teleport yourself back 70-something years to a Nazi extermination camp where they were running people into pits and shooting them, and you said, don't do that. You know, if you could speak German, don't do that. It's wrong to kill these people. It's wrong to be shooting women holding babies who you've stripped down naked in these pits. They would look at you and just <laughs> arrest him and kill him. And so I'm going to admit it. I am crazy. I am. Compared to the average person. You know, I talked some about this the other day because one of my uh, employees, separate from something going on at my office, got picked up in a FBI dragnet. Um because he did some webmaster work for some bar owners, and I'm starting to look at the case it's like it's all a setup um, here locally. And, and in the meeting, you know, it was basically all about how I'm crazy and this is all just my opinion. And so they wanted to make it about Alex Jones. And, and I can understand for people like that that would spend eight years or more of college so they could become an FBI agent it doesn't matter if a federal court just ruled yesterday that the FBI is covering up government involvement in Oklahoma City. I have that in the uh, newspapers uh, out of Salt Lake. It doesn't matter if I have their own memos that have been released by courts and that we know that the feds were running those attacks. Those guys aren't going to ever believe that could be real because that upsets their whole world. And that's why corruption can grow to this level is because everybody thinks they've got a stake in the system so they defend it because it couldn't be real. Really, Fast and Furious couldn't be real? All confirmed. I told you a year and three months ago that it was about narcotics trafficking and shipping guns into Mexico and to gangs around the U.S. to control the drug trade. Not about just some guns sold out of some shops to track them. That was the cover. That's all admitted. I told you it would be used to blame the Second Amendment because I already had speeches by the Attorney General talking about the program before the full details came out. He was just saying, oh, we got a program to track guns, showing that he knew the program was there. Of course he knew. He ordered it. It's come out. But I can see why people like that don't want to admit to it. I can see that they just want to say, oh, that guy's crazy. When I have police officers on this show who were at Oklahoma City on record, heroes, who saw the feds and the bombs and all the rest of it and had the FBI come to their offices and say, you and your wife are dead if you ever talk about what you saw. I can see how little junior FBI agents that are part of the compartmentalized system sit here and think I'm crazy. And they won't even go look up what I said. Then you have Treasury agents like Joe Bannister who finds out the IRS is a collection agency for the private Federal Reserve. He started speaking out, so they arrested him. All right, it will be completely 
open phones today and a ton of news. I've cleared the decks. No guests today. We have some big guests. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, tomorrow, the toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231, 800 259-9231. Let me just read over some of the news we're going to be covering today, though, after we get to a bunch of calls and all the issues and items that callers will bring up. There is a powerful uh, article written by Paul Craig Roberts, Empires Then and Now, Examples of How Empires Have Fallen. Uh, we also have Next Phase of the Surveillance State, Nuclear Powered Drones. That's from InfoWars.com. The Guardian also reports, U.S. draws up plans for nuclear drones. Technology is designed to increase flying time from days to months, along with power available for weapon systems. Lasers. They don't want to just use the big blimps. They're using um, solar and then storing it on batteries for these weapon systems. This is about playing God. And remember, who owns and runs it? J.P. Morgan Chase is at the very top of the pyramid. Rothschild, Rockefeller owned, on record. And they ordered Corzine to give him a couple billion of private bank accounts. And that's why the system hasn't indicted Corzine, who's been caught lying and caught ordering it. I mean, it's public that he ordered it. There's witnesses. The head of the Securities and Exchange uh, you know, Commission, all these people publicly have worked for Corzine in the past. It's total conflict of interest, crime right out in the open. The head of the CME group has come out and said, of course, Corzine ordered it. His people were there and witnessed him ordering it, and he hasn't gotten in trouble. Now, he might end up dying, or he might end up you know, doing a deal to serve a few years as the scapegoat, but as Max Kaiser pointed out, this is J.P. Morgan Chase that gave the order. And that's why nothing's happened, because they're above the law. So I go from nuclear-powered drones to these people because that's who's running it. People like John Corzine, who make 40 to 1 bets with people's private bank accounts, and then is ordered by the Mafia Don, the head of J.P. Morgan Chase, to get the money or else, and does it, and then no one gets in trouble. And that's why you're seeing the elite get crazy and say, well, put little nuclear power plants in aircraft, put them in satellites. And all the scientists say, but if that ever comes back into the atmosphere, which most satellites do, it's going to melt down and explode and rain down radioactive debris. And they're like, radiation's good for you. I mean, I don't believe David Icke that some of the ruling elite, I mean, I understand he believes it, I think he's a good guy, but I don't believe that that they are really, you know, these shape-shifting interdimensional creatures. You know, the Bible says, you know, demons and devils are at the top of the hierarchy. So, so I can see that, you know, religions have said this too, a lot of the elite believe that. That's what my Secrets of Prometheus film leaked, uh, breaks down. Perhaps I'll cover it more later if I have time. But... At a certain point, it would be easier to believe that off-world creatures that love GMO and love radiation were doing this. Because the radiation levels doubled during nuclear testing in Chernobyl in the northern hemisphere of the Earth. And now they've more than doubled again. And cancer is just off the chart. I mean, we're dying. I think in the final equation, that's what I'm here to tell you. We're being slow killed right now. The numbers are all there. It's 100% fact. And I'm not in some type of hate fest with even the minions of this system because they don't know what they're doing. It's like Christ said, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. I know that if the minions of this system knew what they were part of, there's no way they'd go along with this. They're wrecking this beautiful, wonderful world we've got. There's so much beauty, so much innocence, so much good in the world. People always say, why don't you be more positive? There's a lot of good stuff in this world. You know you got it good, Alex. Yeah, I know I got it good. Because my forebears demanded liberty and freedom. They weren't perfect, but they demanded liberty and freedom. And so it created all this prosperity. I'm trying to keep it good. 
And the evil is growing and growing and growing and growing like a cancer. And I just want people to recognize it and to stand against it. That's all I'm trying to do. And I don't even think I do the best job. Just let me be clear about that. But this is about what are you going to do? This is about what are you going to stand for? Because, because we're in a time of great danger. All right, your calls straight ahead on the other side and incredible news on a host of fronts. Stay with us. All right, I've just been ruminating, cogitating on air about my personal life because I'm just thinking aloud here and I'm asking you, what are you thinking about the future of our society and where it's going? You know, I mentioned Joe Bannister uh, going to break uh, at the end of the second segment, a uh, treasury agent who found out that the IRS was a collection agency for the private Federal Reserve, spoke out against it, and they tried to put him in jail for, for his free speech, and then a jury found him not guilty. But this is the type of system we're dealing with. And the establishment is trying to find more and more bad apples who will selectively enforce laws and then also persecute and go after good people who just get off on what they believe is winning the raw exercise of power. I mean, I know there are good FBI agents. I know there are good Treasury agents. I know there are good federal marshals because I've been sent government documents. I've been sent things by good people. When I talked about Dr. Eric Pianca saying soon the, the airborne Ebola will be released and 90% will die and he and his family are ready to die and he's over the biology department at UT. I said something needs to be done. The FBI, if you have any decency, needs to go talk to him today. The FBI went that day within two hours of me saying that on air and questioned Pianca. And he, 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 so, so obviously I know that there are good people in government. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is only going to get crazier and crazier and crazier until we start to really recognize that serious corruption is above us. The reason I mentioned Joe Bannister, we didn't have any guests lined up today because I wanted to just take calls. And I mentioned Joe Bannister, and he called in. If it is him, I'll recognize his voice instantly and said, this is uh, Joe Bannister. And, and, and in fact, I was thinking just last week about trying to get Joe back on. I was thinking about some of the guests that you know, we had on years ago that we've never had on in a while. Uh, I guess I had him in studio a few years ago, uh, Joe Bannister. So I definitely want to get him maybe even on the nightly news tonight uh, if he can do it. I, I've now extended that invitation during the break to him uh, via uh, John up there in Minnesota uh, who takes the calls and then relays them down here to Texas. So we'll find out if he can do that. And then I'll get to Reverend Bruce, Robin, Sasha, Martin, and many others that are holding. And then I'll get into... Speaking of selective enforcement, Judicial Watch has gotten documents. Department of Homeland Security to grant illegal aliens unlawful presence waivers officially. So it's, 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 it's like Obama launching wars without congressional approval or saying he'll kill U.S. citizens if he wants to. He says, I'll shut down power plants without a law. Well, now they're going to issue the illegal aliens unlawful presence waivers, but then deport for no reason people that are here legally and lawfully if they want to. See, they want all these laws on the books so they can selectively enforce them. So we'll be getting into that. Supreme Court ruling allows strip search for any arrest. I was talking last night to the crew about people now being arrested for no seatbelt just to get you into the system, and I found out two people in my office have been arrested in the last year for not wearing a seatbelt, and now you get strip searched, and now they're talking about taking blood. Again, the prisons are full of nonviolent people, full, and then that's why they're releasing the violent offenders. Did you know if you look at the actuaries, a violent offender doesn't spend as much time on average as a nonviolent because they don't make good prisoners. They want to put them back out there to cause the crime so the public needs the system, but enough for me. Uh, Joe Bannister, we haven't talked in a couple of years. If this is Joe, is that really Joe? Hey, Alex, it really is me. How are you? Oh, yeah, that's you. Hey, buddy, how you doing? 
Great. Well, you know, I, uh, you probably know I'm a, a big fan, and I listen all the time, and I was listening this morning. Uh, I was actually shaving. You know, I'm on Pacific time, and I uh, thought I'd better clean up for the day. And, of course, I listened to your show, and you were talking about the, you know, disappointment that uh, all these FBI agents and Fed, uh, you, you cause them to have to decide what is true, uh, what they do every day for their job and what they're told to do, or what the, you know, what the facts show that you put out every day. And I also want to say, Alex, I've never had a chance to say this, but you're the most pro-life person probably on the planet because you look out for the lives of all of us. And, you know, the public probably thinks of a pro-lifer as just someone who's against abortion, which you and I both are, but you're, you're trying to preserve life for everyone, no matter what color, no matter what age, born or unborn. And I just want to say that to you. Well, thank you. But again, all I'm trying to do is just like you're trying to do is we do the moral thing because we love God and that's our conscience. But if you analyze it, it makes sense. If you want everybody to get a fair shake and for there to be real justice and security because you want your children to have a future. I mean, it's really elementary. Exactly. I mean, that was what motivated me to look into the uh, tax issues. And I know that's what motivates you. It's really about a care and concern for our own families and realizing that our neighbors and our friends, they have families too. And it's really all about caring about your fellow man, uh, you know, loving your neighbor as yourself. And, and I, I can totally see that in you. And I just wish that more uh, law enforcement people and federal agents would recognize that that's the motivation that we have. Uh, and that, that's the sole motivation. Let me ask you a couple questions. A, every time there's an excuse for the FBI, to contact us about death threats on a message board, and so they asked me about the Obama deception, and asked my employees about it, and start calling people randomly. Or one of my crew worked somewhere else where they arrested the owners of a bar, and so they call them in, and they're asking questions about me. I mean, should I be concerned about that? Because I know that, and of course, you beat them you know, with a trial. They trumped up stuff on you, a guy with no criminal record, exemplary record at the Treasury Department, you know, an armed agent, you know, who did the raids and all that. Uh, I mean, they, they tried to put you under the jail. Uh, so can you speak to that? Uh, well, there's definitely, you know, you should be concerned. Uh, but ultimately, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're much like me and that, you know, you your parents raised you to be a, a good guy and not that we're perfect, but... Um, you know, you, you, you run every day of your life knowing that God's watching what you're doing and you try to be a moral person. So I think in terms of, you know, that, I don't think you have anything to worry about. But no, no, exactly. I mean, but I mean, specifically, you, uh, you I mean, tell folks briefly what happened to you. I mean, this was in the San Francisco Chronicle. This was on record. They've repeatedly tried to put you in jail for your free speech. Tell folks about that. Well, basically, the, the criminal part of the trial, uh, I had a client who wanted to, he had already paid his tax income tax money in, and he wanted to ask for a refund. And so You're a CPA, for those said, that don't know to interrupt. You're a CPA. Go ahead. Uh, well, actually, not anymore, thanks to the IRS. Okay. I was for 15 years. Uh, but basically, this client wanted to, wanted to follow the rule book to ask for his money back. And so he asked me, well, how do I find out where the rule book is and what are the rules? So we followed that rule book to the letter, and the IRS uh, turned that into a conspiracy to defraud the United States of America and claimed that these income tax returns that we filed to start this refund process were false. And they turned it into four felony counts that would have put me in prison for probably three to five years. Well, thankfully, one of the rights we still have is a right to a jury trial, and the government presented all of their evidence, and uh, I didn't even testify in the trial. There was really no need to, because the government couldn't find any evidence that there was, you know, I had done anything wrong, that we didn't follow the IRS rule book, or that we put in any, anything false on these amended tax returns. And so the jury, I find out later after talking to the jury, they're looking at each other like, why are we here? <laughs> here this this IRS has gone through this big, long investigation, and they're, they're prosecuting this guy, but they have all their star witnesses come up on the witness stand, and they can't testify that there was ever any conspiracy, that there's anything false on these tax returns. So it was a big joke. But meanwhile, 
they indicted me and wanted to try to put me in prison. So basically throwing everything up on the wall and hoping that something st stuck and nothing stuck. Because well, let me bring this up to you because you worked for years with the FBI, federal marshals as a treasury agent, you know, on these raids, these investigations. I, at my core, now know what the term God-fearing is. But, 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 I mean, my conscience... If I was setting somebody up who was innocent, especially, if I knew somebody was a child killer and I set them up, I would feel bad and wouldn't do it. But setting up innocent people literally sends chills up my spine thinking about it. And, and I, I mean, it just sounds like the worst bad luck, to use a term, that I could imagine. I would never do that and then i see all these cases of people being set up them trying to set you up they knew you hadn't done anything i mean how do they sleep at night trying to put people in horrible tuberculosis filled dungeons for no reason well i think Lauk's the biggest problem is that the, the hierarchy of these agencies okay the actual agents are just working people just like you and me um but they need the job and meanwhile, the people up the chain of command who are even less accountable are the ones that are willing to do more dirty deeds because they have more to lose, or at least they think they do. They're making, you know, a couple hundred grand a year. Uh, they're, you know, big in management. They're getting all kinds of perks. And when they're told to do something, they just do it. And, again, like you mentioned all the time, there's so much compartmentalization in the federal government that those who want to orchestrate from the top can make everyone do their little deed, and it doesn't seem so dirty to the individual agent. But when you put it all together, you know, they're messing with people's lives and their livelihoods and their freedom. Sure. I mean, how did the Army, and I later learned the guy was with the Army, have somebody, when I'm trying to cover an event in Florida, jump out and start lighting fires to blame me for it? I mean, that shows a level, and I had to, of course, stomp it out and then restrain the person and then ran off into the night. Mike Hansen witnessed all of this. It, it, it just shows a level of craziness in the elite that is getting more and more, if you look at the criminology, which I know you've studied, an example of like serial killers get more and more reckless because they want to be caught at a subconscious level. That's why criminals brag. But what do you make of the fact that now the choice is getting more and more obvious, where Corzine can steal billions of dollars, lie in front of Congress, be caught red-handed in all his memos and orders and wire transfers, and doesn't get in trouble, uh, uh, prudential for now 13 years, and, and a bunch of other insurance companies takes the death benefits of dead troops when they die because they made a deal with the government so they could do it. It's like the government said, you know, we can steal because they're crooks too, you know, as if that makes it okay. And now it's a larger conspiracy. Uh, now we've got Fast and Furious, which if you actually read the federal court cases where this came out, it's government bringing in drugs. It's, it's guns to gangs in the U.S., not just Mexico. Gangs in Honduras. I mean, this is a Iran-Contra deal. Now that it's all so obvious, what, what effect do you think that's having in the federal government? Is that making just the good people leave so that nothing but bad people then will stay? Or what's the process? Is there anything good coming out of this? Oh, I think a tremendous amount. It's just we're not seeing it. I mean, I've been told that uh, agents that I used to work with, agents around the Bay Area, you know, where I was assigned, uh, I do have a lot of support, but they just don't have the, the courage to actually speak up about it. And so I think that's at least a, a step in the right direction. Um, I think also that you're, what you put out is so factual and so real that, you know, it's, it's going to have an effect. Uh, it, it's just you're chipping away, and, you know, eventually it's going to take a while for the dam to break. And the question is, you know, as, as you've said often, this is a sprint to the finish line between the New World Order and the, you know, good, good people who just want to be free and who's going to get there first. And uh, we need law enforcement people to take those uh, risks and, and, you know, risk their life, their, their sacred honor uh, for these kinds of issues because literally our own lives are at stake. I mean, when they're poisoning our water, they're poisoning our air, that affects federal agent or non-federal agent just the same. You, we can all die of cancer and 
uh, bone maladies and all kinds of things from the same poison. So it's time to wake up and speak up. Uh, do it in a, um, in, a, in a prudential way. You know, have prudence and uh, don't do things half-cocked. But nevertheless, uh, speak up. Yeah, so that's my biggest that. problem is I do so much media that I do some half-cocked stuff. And, and that's my only frustration. And I keep talking about myself because I'm trying to self-analyze and be a better person because of the responsibility I have. Uh, it, it's just that I can feel it and see it all coming to a head. I mean, has Fast and Furious woken up people? Because, I mean, I've seen that really wake people up. Oh, absolutely. And, I mean, you know, back, and you, of course, were much more involved in the Waco uh, investigation than I was, but I was still a special agent in the IRS, and we went to see rules of engagement. And I, went, I remember going with a few pro-gun friends uh, who still stayed friends with me, even though I was an IRS special agent, and a handful of IRS special agents. We went to the showing of rules of engagement together. So even when I was an agent, I was awake to what was going on and even trying to awaken others. Uh, but I know at least one guy in that group who went to see rules of engagement, and he's still up in the high upper hierarchy of the IRS uh, CID management. So... Whatever he saw that day, he's somehow able to dismiss in his mind and still somehow sleep at night. Well, I'm glad that people are starting to wake up. And, and what's most important is, is that people make a choice. And it, it doesn't mean that everything I say is completely accurate because I make mistakes or that everything anybody says is completely accurate. But we know that our basic liberties are being trashed. I mean, now in England, which is just a few years ahead of us, they just announced everything is recorded. We're listening to everything. I mean, that's in the news now. They went from denying it to, yeah, we're listening to everything you're doing. Get used to it. We're recording everything. And now they're going, yeah, we're spying on you here. And yeah, the CIA director says the CIA is domestically operating and that there's, you know, built-in devices to spy on you and you're in the new clock radios and dishwashers. So really what I see is the world is getting its choice right now. And the same things that are happening here are happening across the globe. Uh, I'm going to take a ton of calls coming up in the next segment and throughout the next hour and get into all this news. But, uh, Joe, I know I'm springing this on you on, on short notice you, uh, because I've been meaning to get you on the show. Uh, if you can't do it today, uh, maybe later in the week or next week, but uh, are, are you available to do uh, the nightly news at, say, uh, I know you're a busy guy. Uh, at, uh, no, no, don't even, Alex. I'm, I'd be honored, and uh, I'll get all the spoofed up here and get ready to go, and I'll be happy to, and I appreciate you taking my call, and I appreciate all that you do. Are you kidding? Uh, now, now uh, that'll be 1230. We'll tape that, and then I'll do the news later, but then we usually do the uh, interview uh, early in the day. So uh, 1230 uh, Pacific's good for you, Joe? That'd be totally fine, Alex. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I want to make sure, because I know we've got a bunch of numbers, but I want to make sure we've got the accurate number. And I want to make sure we have your Skype ID, if you have that, uh, for the nightly news. There goes Joe Bannister. Talk about a man of courage going way up the ranks. Treasury Department, here's a radio show saying the IRS collects for the private Federal Reserve. Didn't believe it, set out to disprove it, found that it was true, spoke out, got arrested. See, I intended to take a bunch of calls, and then we get Joe Bannister calling in, but... This little segment and the whole next hour, it is going to be phone calls, phone calls, phone calls. In the third hour, I've got a bunch of special news reports I want to go over and analyze uh, and a lot more. But speaking of lawlessness in government, guys, put that Washington Post back on screen. Radio listeners, if you just type in uh, Homeland Security Department has the lowest morale ever, you will get the Washington Post. And the headline is, Low Morale at Homeland Security is Focus of Congressional Hearing. And that, of course, is all the agencies that are under Homeland Security. And why do they have low morale? They're getting record pay. Because they know this country is falling apart, and they know there's corruption going on. And they know people like Corzine and Obama are above the law. Illegal aliens are given waivers. I remember five years ago, Bush was doing this, and then Obama continued it. That they would do fake raids on meatpacking plants and stuff just to get the fines on the company and arrest the owners. And then they would take the illegals to a facility and give them green cards on the spot. And in some cases, use them for federal construction projects. And you, you know, the feds aren't getting in trouble using illegals. And again, you cannot have this selective enforcement stuff. 
Here it is, DHS to grant illegal aliens unlawful presence waivers. Let's, let's go to your phone calls right now. Robin and then uh, Reverend and then uh, Sasha. Martin, we'll get to all of you. Robin in Arizona, you're on the air. Welcome. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Um, could you take my number and uh, have a call? No, ma'am, I probably am not going to have time to call you back uh, because you, you you called here. Did you want to talk on air? Yeah, I do about the Arizona. Um, what is it do they exactly mean by that? I mean, if you say one word, they can come after you. <laughs> well, that's the kind of crazy stuff. In fact, guys, I had it yesterday. Stack, will you reprint me our article? By the way, got on DrudgeReport.com. Uh, so we got a lot of attention. We appreciate Drudge doing that because it's important. Obviously, I wish the media would report on it. Arizona passed a law saying that you can have criminal charges on you of basically stalking and bullying. It's a copy of the cyberbullying legislation that the ADL wants that kills the First Amendment. And it just says cuss words or disparaging remarks. I just mentioned the cuss word part of the bill. It says disparaging remarks. Um, and, of course, I don't like the troll culture on the Internet. It's a culture of cowards that ruin the Internet where they can act like big men and call people names and say I'm a murderer and all this stuff. But that's because they're little cowards. They never come up and say that to my face. Okay, so you don't want to let them spoil everybody's First Amendment. And so, yes, ma'am, um, you can go read the article uh, at InfoWars.com. In fact, I'll, I'll uh, dig up the headline for you uh, here in a moment. I can't remember the exact headline. It has a link to the bill. And it, it's basically the Cyberbullying Act at a state level. There it is. Arizona passes sweeping Internet censorship bill legislation to make it illegal to use offensive language. And so not just cuss words. It, it goes on in the language to say disparaging. That's what Europe's doing. They say, well, if you, you've got free speech, but if it hurts someone's feelings, well, now you're going to get arrested. I mean, they actually arrest you in Europe. Canada is now arresting preachers that read anti-homosexual passages. And again, whether you're for that or against it, it's the, it's the free speech that's been guaranteed by Magna Carta 1215. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes. I've been following you for two years. I love your show. I've been trying to call you every day for about two years. So thanks for getting me today. Well, thank you. And I wasn't trying to be rude saying I, I can't call you back. I, I, I need to go call my grandma back. And I need to call my wife back. I just have no time. God, God bless you, ma'am. All right, more calls and a ton of news straight ahead. Second hour. All right, into hour number two. And I'm glad the last caller brought up this article because later I will get into it more. I barely mentioned it yesterday. And I, I did something that I do a lot, and I apologize for it. Instead of exaggerating what's going on, as people seem to think I do sometimes, and certainly that does happen occasionally. Everybody's guilty of hyperbole. Normally things are worse than I said. And reading over the legislation that Arizona passed, it doesn't just say cuss words. So I've been saying, if you cuss online, they can arrest you. That's not what it is. It's the Cyberbullying Act. It says any offensive language, anything disparaging or hurtful. I mean, just totally unconstitutional. And let me tell you, if the Supreme Court throws out Obamacare, I get a little more hope. <laughs> they, you know, they did rule the Second Amendment's individual right. But it, it's a battle of ideas. We've got to be out there stating the facts against the lies. When these globalists come out and say, arrest people that don't agree with global warming being man-made or put us in psychiatric wards, shout them down. Say, hey, you don't try to arrest me for my speech. You're a tyrant. I, I want you to have your speech, but don't you call for my arrest. That's, that's treasonous. That's dangerous. That's authoritarian. You shut up. Because let me tell you, I'm for all speech until somebody says get rid of somebody's speech. So you go ahead. You, you talk as much as you want, but I'm going to be screaming right back in your face. Sasha in Nevada, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Welcome. Hi, Alex. Okay, one minute. Um... I'm an old school hacker. I work for Bill Gates. I go way, way back on all of this stuff. And um, I really enjoy your program. You educate me every day. And 
I wanted to bring up something to you which you must know about, but, and I've sent you multiple messages to, and even a letter once. Um, the message was titled, Google is laughing at you. Um, you talk about the NDAA, you talk about uh, Google and Facebook's relationships with the CIA, all that kind of stuff. Mike Adams had an article about how buying storable foods can put you on a watch list. And I just wanted to talk about the problem that, um, about this Google Analytics and how it's basically Google owns the Internet and, and how everybody is um, complicit in this, including InfoWars. Um, you guys include this uh, Google Analytics spyware on your website, and I know it provides a lot of useful statistics and stuff, but it also allows Google to run code on all the users' machines, which could pretty much do anything, including turning on your webcam or... Sure, if you drive. don't block it. Uh, look, looking at this, we choose to attack Apple for what it does, but I own an iPhone. We choose to assail Google to tell them to stop accessing computers without authorization, which they've been caught doing. I'm no hacker like you. I just read what the experts say. And, 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 and I've had big debates around here. Uh, we would not be able to... It's like we're going into the matrix. People say, why do you use... I'll hold you over because you, you, you kind of disagree. And I think you're making a pertinent point. And, and it's a decision here. Either we're going to be in the matrix and fight in the matrix, or I can sit outside the matrix, but... The people I want to reach aren't in the matrix. Do you see the point I'm making? Absolutely. Um, that's true, and, and you have to be on the Internet, and, and that's true. But I think that I wanted to start a movement, like I was inspired by one of your callers to uh, uh, put up, uh, got everybody to get off of the uh, registration service from GoDaddy because they were supporting um, SOPA. And this is a, I, in, in doing this, I wrote a little software product to block this. And um, as part of that, I researched this, and, I, lo and I, I went ahead and loaded the top 1 million websites on Alexa. And it was shocking to me, and this has really blew my mind, and I'm in this area. Well, it's stay there. Cool. I'm going to give you the floor for a few minutes when we get back to break down how this works, what's going on, and how everybody just gives Google access to their site. And so then Google is able to basically track and control the web. My issue is... I'm now using the Google system two ways to expose what they're doing, but I have to be interfaced with it to do it. But, but explain to me how I can get around that when we come back. It is open phones. We are now eight minutes into this second hour of worldwide broadcast. We're talking to Sasha in Nevada, who says he's a hacker and wants to point out uh, some of the uh, things that are going on on the Internet. Speaking of the Internet, because callers have been calling in about this, we, 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 we mentioned this yesterday, uh, our article, and it got a lot of uh, circulation on the Internet. Arizona passes sweeping Internet censorship bill, legislation to make it illegal to use offensive language online. The state legislature of Arizona has passed a bill that vastly broadens telephone harassment laws and applies them to the Internet and other means of electronic communication. The law, which is being pushed under the guise of an anti-bullying campaign, would mean that anything communicated or published online that was deemed to be offensive by the state, including editorials, illustrations, and even satire, could be criminally punished. And it's, it, it's passed out of one side. It hasn't fully passed yet, so that's, that's good. I'm, I'm, again, I t tend to condense info down when I'm taking calls or hurry up and get to the next person, and I'm saying it, it had passed. It's only passed one side hasn't passed the full uh, legislature. The comic book Legal Defense Fund breaks down the Arizona House Bill 2549. The bill is sweepingly broad and would make it a crime to communicate via electronic means speech that is intended to annoy, offend, harass, terrify, as well as certain sexual speech. Because the bill is not limited to one to one communications, HB 2549 would apply to the Internet as a whole, thus criminalizing all manner of writing, cartoons, and other protected material the state finds offensive or annoying. So, so you go to a website and you don't like what you're seeing, and you go file something and they come after you, and it goes on from there. And it's, it's basically word for word, I've looked at the bill, the, the Cyberbullying Act does exactly what Congress has been trying to pass. Every time some poor kid commits suicide because people are being mean to him online, uh, they say, uh, oh, we got to criminalize speech for everybody. 
Number one, why are the parents letting all their kids do this? Why are you letting your children on the Internet when they're 12 years old? Why, why do you have them in public schools? Why do you subject them to this dead culture? I mean, I've said it. You'd be better to your kids not even know how to read or write, but to know how to work on a car or, or, or clean out a garage or paint than... I mean, all these people have college degrees now, and they can't even get a job. And the illegal aliens are driving around in brand new cars, living in nice houses because they know they know what makes money. The old carpentry, you know, things like that. And I'm not saying college is worthless, but it's close to worthless with a lot of the different degrees because it costs too much. You're not going to get enough money out of that degree because the jobs don't exist because we've been deindustrialized. The the, the high skilled jobs. There's maybe a third of what there was in the 70s. That's a conservative estimate. I'm going to shut up now. It's just all of this ties together. Now, Sasha in Nevada called in during the last segment, if you missed it, and, and just recap that. So you're a, you're a good, you know, great computer person, work for Bill Gates, uh, and you're pointing out that Google is laughing at us, and you've sent us articles about this. Send it to us uh, again. And uh, I'll try to do a search on it and, and maybe even post what you have to say. I know what you're saying is true. And I was explaining why um, we use Google Analytics and things. It's because we can interface with the matrix. Just like I said, I use an iPhone. But I talk about how they should change their labor practices and, and pay people enough so they don't commit suicide. And they now are doing that. So all of this tech is built the same way. All of it is immoral. So I use it as a hypocrite, but the excuse is I can shoot videos on that driving down the road that'll be seen by a million people or more, criticizing it and pointing out, by the way, I'm using an iPhone, I'm a hypocrite, but by the way, they should charge you, you know, $5 more for an iPhone and, and, and that would actually raise those people's standard of living, but the globalists don't want that. I mean, Al Gore runs Apple. Uh, what do you expect? He's a monstrous person. You know, he owns oil companies that literally are the number one company chopping down rainforest on record. Occidental just just vicious. And then lectures you all day to pay him carbon tax money through his uh, carbon consortium. I see idiots send me emails. They go, or comments all the time. Oh, we'll pay our ta carbon taxes to Al Gore. Oh, yeah? You are ignorant. See, people realize that's crazy to pay Al Gore money. So it's like, oh, that can't be true. That, that, he doesn't run an oil company. Oh, actually, he does. Wow, Alex is right. Oh, he, you don't pay your carbon taxes to him. Yeah, you do. The Chicago Exchange, he's a big part of that. Uh, gore and blood, I'm not joking. It's called gore and blood. Or is it blood and gore? No, it's gore and blood. Guys, Google gore and blood. Uh, carbon trading, London, England. It's, it's the big exchange. The Rothschild Front in the city of London in London is called Gore and Blood. That's his company. I'm not, it's not a pun, Gore and Blood, Blood and Gore. It, it's called Blood and Gore, or Gore and Blood. Uh, it, it's, it's, it, it's Gore and Blood carbon trading. It's a big, it's a big company. The, and they make you buy it. I mean, you literally pay him that money. Side issue. The caller is bringing up a very central point, and we've had debates about it. For a while, I just had Google turned on in the back end. They couldn't track everything my IT folks told me with that, but that way I could see what we're reaching and what we're doing. Very valuable information. But when you go to the Oracle and tell it what you want to know, it now knows what you are thinking. And it's the same thing. It's like in Lord of the Rings. I love to use it as an analogy um, where you... Now, there's an article, Blood and Gore, the nickname for Al Gore's carbon trading firm that is poised to make billions of dollars from carbon credits. And yeah, it's the nickname because the principle is what Lord Blood and then Al Gore. You can look it up, side issue. Continuing here, you can actually find their website, is, is what I'm saying, um, that Gandalf's telling them, don't look into that crystal. And they're like, but I can see what's going on in faraway lands. And he said, yeah, but... But Sauron or Soraman can also look right back through. You never know who's watching. <laughs> throw, the, throw the bag over it. People used to come to my house over a decade ago and laugh at me that I'd cover up cameras on computers and stuff. And they're like, oh, they're watching you? Now they admit they are. So I get what the caller is saying. 
It's just that then you should turn Google cookies off, which I do at my house. And then Google got caught breaking through those. So does Microsoft. I know. So you can either unplug from it all or use it to crush the enemy. I believe that we see this, these things go two ways. You understand that? Now, I can barely turn a computer on. I, I just read what all the experts say. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sasha, and tell us your big idea uh, on a piece of code you've written, and then others can write similar code that can really expose these people. You've got the floor. Go ahead. Okay, before that, I'm just going to spend 30 seconds, and I didn't mean to beat you up on this. No, I I, no, 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 I need to, hold on, hold on, I need to be beat up, because, but, but, but I need to be beat up so I can show and, and say where I stand on this, because I, I, we've had these discussions, no one's just ever brought it up to me, so I want you to know where I stand, part of total transparency, but go ahead. Okay, let me take another example. Let's say you go to aljazeera.com, and who's operated by a foreign um, group and so forth, you go there and you're reading an article about U.S. government spying. Well, the fact is, is that on that article there on Al Jazeera, they're including Google, Facebook, and Twitter code on there. Now, it can be implemented in different ways, but the way that it works, that, that where people commonly put the Facebook like button on their pages, they include a block of code from Facebook that draws that button. Well, that block of code that draws that button also goes ahead and communicates all your personal information, the fact that you've read there, even can log your keystrokes and turn on your camera and all that that you said. Well, actually, the Facebook one can't, but the Google one can. And, and let's then back to your, uh, your site. The, you include Google Analytics, and yes, that's a lot of useful information, but I would argue that that's not necessary at all for your end users. And if you just didn't include that code, you're complicit in running this code for Google. If this code wasn't on your site, then it wouldn't be able to be tracked. And I understand. You were saying you did uh, you know, the, the top sites on Alexa and found most of them have it, right? I took and loaded one million websites. I know it's the largest study to date. I know that the largest study beyond that, and I'll write an article to that for that, and probably it'll be in the Wall Street Journal. It'll be great if you guys could write the article. I'll send you all the data. But I loaded the top one million websites, and of those one million websites, 700,000 of the top one million websites are including Google Analytics, or some, or maybe 75% of them are including Google, Facebook, or Twitter, all three of, of the code that they run for other people. And I would say that the solution is for, there's a solution for the end user and there's a solution for the webmaster. I was thinking about more of a, the webmaster side. Um, the solution for the end user is there are solutions. None of them really completely work. But, um, well, listen, that, that listen, we've tried. That's what I'm saying. They've built the architecture where you pretty much need this. So explain to me how we do it without it and can still interface and effectively uh, fight the globalist. Explain how we do that and we will do it. Yeah, I mean, you've got my absolute you know, word on that. If, if, if we can find a solution, we are waging war against these people. We are exposing them. I know what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Uh, it's just that, take the ad company we were using for the software to display ads. Google then bought that. I mean, the problem is, many times we're using something that isn't spying on people, and Google comes and buys it. So it's like whack-a-mole. And, and, and I don't have that much money. I don't have that big of an IT team. Uh, and, and so we're just constantly just trying to keep the sites up and working. And uh, it's all a process, but uh, I... I absolutely hear what you're saying. Okay, yeah, I, and I, I hear what you're saying, too. Um, specifically to Google Analytics, it would take more work, but you don't need to run it. You can get those same statistics without it. As far as YouTube and using YouTube, yes, go ahead and use it. That's a great using their tool against them, and, and that's the best way to get the information out there. Um, as far as the Facebook button. Well, hold yes, on. Stay there. We're going to have to come back and then we'll get to other callers, but I want you to finish up. You said you have a plan. Uh, you should have a piece of software. I want to hear about that. Stay there. Wow, I was talking to Sasha during the break, and he was telling me some of the stuff he's up to. And I've gotten a pretty good gauge on callers over the years. He sounds like a pretty credible guy. And he's, just doing, he's, he's certainly doing some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, let me tell you, the really good computer programmers, hackers out there, are one of the best things we've got going for us. And most of them love liberty. Because when you're intelligent, you love liberty. That's, 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 uh, that's one of the prerequisites. Of course, there's evil people that, uh, who are also intelligent, but that's a minority. 
It's just good people tend to, never, uh, tend to never actually stand up to the corrupt. And it's only when we actually see it as our job to stand up and crush the corrupt that we start real, uh, seeing real movement. And the, the globalists are experts at also co-opting uh, people that are intelligent. Uh, but but f finishing up your point, in the next few days you're going to send me this article that you're putting together and we'll, we'll put it on Infowars.com uh, after we uh, you know, go over it some. Uh, finish up any other points you wanted to make. Uh, no, that's great, Alex. The only thing I would say is, is that uh, you know, one of the things I'm a little disheartened about is, is that it seems that uh, with the fact that Google has, you know, basically got their code on every single website, so it doesn't matter what, uh, what article you're reading or what site it's there. I think what the real solution is is that at some point somebody needs to form uh, another Internet, a second Internet, one that's, um, kind of it could run on top of the current Internet, because if somebody pulled the plug on the Internet, it's, it, the information sources like yours and so forth could just be turned off overnight. And I know that, you know, you worry about these things too. And um, so there needs to be another solution so that, you know, we have uh, something like CB radio sideband equivalent of an Internet so that, that information can still get out if it gets to that point. Sure. Well, Google is clearly a government construction, an elitist construction. Now at the Bilderberg Group, Google is right up there at the top because they understand that they're taking over the entire economy and infrastructure with a system with built-in back doors and Trojan horses to absolutely control all information. And as Google now admits, try to predict the future. So this is a, uh, an attempt to create an information singularity or an omnipresent uh, awareness or at least a, a, a dim counterfeit of that. And it's very, very serious. Look forward to that email. Thank you so much. Okay, now I will try to hurry through calls. It's just that these callers are always so good. We've got a bunch of news coming up too. Reverend Bruce in New York, welcome to the airwaves. Finally. <laughs> God bless you. I have a couple of comments to make about Obama's background, and then I want to briefly ask you about the Bilderberg meeting. But before that, I just want to say, at the end of the day, I don't care what the devil is doing, what his people are doing, God has the last say, and he is in control. And on that note, uh, concerning Obama's background, uh, prior to Obama being elected to office, I don't remember the gentleman's name. He was being interviewed, uh, and he had a lot of information on Obama. He did a great amount of investigation. That's one of the reasons why I didn't vote for Obama. What he had said was uh, concerning Obama's family in Kenya that they had a background that were originally Arabs. They were Arabs. They came into Kenya and they held the current government hijacked, took over the Kenyan government. No, no, that's Webster that Tarpley, and he's written two books on Obama. That's all true. Uh, that's all true uh, about Obama and Odinga. And they used a Muslim-Christian war to get Odinga in, in a new position. They created the prime ministership. And so, yes, that's, the, that's what Obama did. Not only that, uh, Michelle encouraged Obama to become a Christian, so he would be more electable uh, to become president or to get into office. So he was not a Christian. He became a Christian just for electability. Also, there was a, 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 an, an article online that a gentleman wrote who went to a, a, a dinner, a supper over in, uh, in uh, Russia, and there was a woman who was a communist that told him all about Obama, his rearing, and who he would be back in the 80s. She educated him on this black man who would uh, run and become president, that he is a communist, and they're waiting for him. And she gave a whole lot of details about Obama and how he was raised to uh, be president, and he was also a communist. He wrote a whole article. I have that on my desktop. If you want, I could email that article Sure, sure. You. What I think is going on with Obama is he's like a multifaceted uh, shapeshifter politically. He's all those things and has all those backgrounds, but he has CIA from the time he's born in his background. So the truth is, we don't know who Obama is. We only know that he's not who he says he is. That, that's 100%. He's got three or four different names. His records are all blocked. 
He is not who he says he is. His official story is a lie. Okay, let me do this right now. Let me go ahead and get into some more of the news, and then I'm going to go back to your phone calls, uh, Martin, Kevin, uh, Brad, Paul, Patrick, and others that are patiently holding. We'll go to Martin first uh, here in just a few minutes. Uh, here is some of the other news that we've got. Supreme Court ruling allows strip searches for any arrest. And they're saying that, yes, uh, if you get arrested for any reason, it allows a strip search, which includes, I guess, a cavity search. And it, it implies that everyone should be strip searched. So now, even when you go into a custodial arrest, like your, your mom gets arrested for a warrant, you're five years old, the government takes you. You better believe the CPS wants to do that strip search because that's why they got into that, that profession. How many TSA workers have now been caught being pedophiles or running prostitution rings? It's like every day. They're so rampant about it and they're so open. I've seen cases where they rape women in parking lots. By the way, I have some TSA news coming up next. So Supreme Court ruling allows strip search for any arrest. I've been arrested quite a few times demonstrating and protesting. And the police in New York, I don't even think they frisked me. I was wearing a t-shirt and jeans. They told me empty out my pockets. I've been frisked in, in the Austin jail a few times, but just, you know, checking. But no, going to do the strip search. Got to enjoy the humiliation. I've seen videos online in the jails when men are stripping women. The women cry and they just start beating the daylights out of them. Because again, you're going to get dungeon keeper types who like abusing people. Does that mean all police are like that? No. But the bad ones get in there and they're protected and they're promoted. In fact, I did nothing at the Austin jail and this about four foot nine guy. Oh, maybe he was five feet. I'm not knocking people that are short. I'm only 5'10". The point is, th this guy was no way he was above five feet. And I say that because I don't remember his name, so people know who he is if he still works there. He was red hair, looked like he was about 40. I'd been arrested protesting the thumb scanning by the state police. They were friendly, took me down there. And bring me in, and the, and the little redhead guy tells me, turn around while he frisked me and starts shoving my head. Not, not, not super hard. It was definitely assault, banging my head into the cinder block. It's like, get up against that wall. Just a little, I'm a runt wimp, and I've got this job so I can shove people bigger than me around all day and feel powerful. I don't know how pathetic I look. How pathetic and weak this is. And I just felt sorry for the guy. Man, you want to work in a jail so you can shove somebody's head in a wall. Didn't smart off, didn't say anything. Just, I got arrested to talk about biometrics and where all that was going. And to warn people about the cashless society and how they would shut down garage sales and farmers markets, which they're now doing. Harassing lemonade stands. I was pointing out that they want this cashless society for total control. If you're not a good globalist, they just turn your thumbprint off, turn your face scan off. So I was there for a reason. I was getting the attention I wanted to the issue. And it was on the news. You know, hundreds of people showed up at the protest. So I was very polite, very nice. And um, he enjoyed. I don't know, four or five times running my head into the wall. And then he was like, going to do something? <laughs> like, like a little leprechaun or something. You know, he made you look like a leprechaun. And they had red hair, looked like a leprechaun. And I was just like, okay, man, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if that's the best you can do, great. But no, they got other dungeon keepers like to strap you down in those chairs, the rapes that go on, the murders that go on. There have been a lot of murders in the uh, Travis County lockup, so I'm lucky. You know, they kill quite a few people in there. It's always an accident. There's been a new video out of Chicago where they break the guy's neck for no reason and then, and then wheel him out on camera and, and nobody got in trouble. So they just kill whoever they want. 
So now, th th this article opens up a whole nother subject and a whole nother area. Because it made national news four or five years ago that we had her on the show when a woman from Lago Vista stopped at her community outside Austin, like a golf course lake community, and it's one of those places where the mailboxes are up on the top of the hill. And so she got her mail, and the kids got out, like mine do sometimes, as they pull up near the house, and they were out of their seatbelts. Police officer pulls her over. On record, she didn't do anything. This was all in the newspaper. She, and she said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just, my house is right there, you know, 100 yards away. And he goes, you're going to jail. Takes her to jail, they call the CPS. Later, her doctor husband, the police came to his house and beat him up. The police drove by because it's quasi countryside out there and they were burning brush. Everybody does burning cedar trees. And because uh, I had him on the show, it was on the news, we covered the whole thing. And so they beat him up and took him to jail. It's like once they're going to start showing you, hey, we're going to show you because he went on national news. Just five years ago, maybe it was six years ago, guys searched the term under web. A uh, woman arrested in Lago Vista for no seatbelt. And then it'll give me the actual date because time just flies. It might even been like 2004, 2005. I can't remember. I just get obsessed on mindless factoids. Sorry, listeners. And now they start strip searching people. And this has become a big issue. In fact, in the Supreme Court case, they're taking women mainly who've never, never been touched by another man other than their husband. And they, I mean, they're, they're taking people to jail that don't belong in jail. Goody two-shoes old ladies. Goody two-shoes young women. Um, pastors of churches. I mean, you see it all the time because the system wants... They encourage police in many cities now to get people booked. There's bigger fines, fees. It gets people in to get their fingerprints biometrically. This is on record. Get them in the jail. So you've got women who have never been in trouble in their life, and they're suddenly in a holding tank with murderers. They are suddenly in these jails with feces on the ground, snot all over the walls, vomit everywhere. I've been in quite a few jails protesting. In fact, when I don't want to be arrested for no reason at all, one time in New York, I mean, it was like 100 and plus degrees in there in the summer. Jail guards like out of a movie, like Quasimodo or something, where they were dragging one leg over with the keys in their hand. They're like, oh! You like it? And, and standing there with a McDonald's bag and an orange drink next to the person going, You want food? What you going to do for it? What you going to do for it? And I was like, this is, an, in, this is entertaining. I might want to stay in here. I mean, talk about a sociology investigation. And then sweetly coming back over with the McDonald's, because I guess that's what they feed you there because they don't have food. It's McDonald's. And then and then and they go here's the food for you. And they're like and then the, and then the weirdos in the jails going oh thank you. I mean I was like whoa whoa get me out of here. <laughs> but in a weird way it was like wow I want to stay in here and see what else happens. This is bizarre. These these because it was like some weird nerd who was getting off on people being behind bars and they had power and it was guaranteed the guy had an 80 IQ or lower. Like a village idiot walking by with keys, dragging them down. Because it had, it had old big keys in this old precinct. It was over a hundred-year-old jail. And he had like this big ring of keys. And you see this stuff, and it's like something out of a movie, dragging keys down the side. I was only in there two hours. And like 300 protesters marched you know, halfway across the city where they took me and stood around chanting, and just because the New York police were lazy and because the captain got called out when he was asleep, it was like 10 o'clock at night, he comes and says, listen, I want to go home and go to bed. We're just going to release you. You shouldn't have been arrested anyways because it was a non-arrestable offense. It was using an unpermitted sound device. And he goes, but we're going to crack your heads and it's rock and roll time if you don't leave. And I was tired. I said, great. Lord, buddy, no, let's not protest. Let's go. Because the cops were getting their billy clubs out and wanted to go to sleep. <laughs> but I'm telling you, just incredible laziness. And they've got a little... See, I said I'd go to your calls, and I'm, I start telling stories, and it just goes forever. 
How did I get into this? Oh, here it is. We're all being trained. You see, normal, hardworking, non-criminal class people never experience prisons, never experience jail, don't know what it's like. And in a way, this is good, because these are the goody two-shoes that go and sit on these juries when there's no evidence or it's a nonviolent crime or m marijuana. And they love sending people who have got long hair or who are black or Hispanic or whatever the case is to jail. And it's not even that they're, quote, racist in their mind. It's that, oh, that's a scary person I don't know. They must be guilty. You know, it's more of the unknown is scary. So in a way, this is backfiring, having the TSA grope people's private parts, grope Miss USA, do all this. I talked to the state reps. That's why they unanimously passed a law to start arresting the TSA when they grope. But the feds threatened an armed blockade of the airways, so they backed off cowardly. These state reps can't fly anymore. These are super clean-cut people with, you know, beautiful wives, handsome children, uh, and they're watching them get groped and are freaking out. Good. These globalist social engineers, it's going to backfire on all of them. You want this tyranny? Well, all of the middle class and wealthy people are now having to go through it. And so this is going to backfire. That the fact that they're now taking women, and a lot of times beating them to death, because the women freak out. This is mama's, you know... Uh, you know, this is daddy's little girl who always had everything she wanted and gets her nails done once a week and goes to church and does bake sales in Blue Santa and loves the system. And oh, America, land of the free, home of the brave, who puts little American flags out. And she gets pulled over by some shaved head, tattooed cop. The CPS takes her kids for no insurance, just because she doesn't have the insurance card on her, or, or no seatbelt, and she gets to spend the night in there hearing people howling and crazy and detoxing and vomiting everywhere, she gets to discover, in a way I just had an epiphany here, this is good, this is really good. Throw all the women in the dungeons with the dungeon keepers. Let them find out what's happening to all the poor people forever. See, the tyranny, this is why it always falls, it's done eating all the poor people, and now it wants everybody. Now it wants everybody. And let me tell you, that's when revolution comes. We got to use that Queen's Reich song I hear on the radio. Revolution calling. You know that song? Because, because that is exactly what's going on here. So Supreme Court ruling allows strip searches for any arrest. New York Times, every detainee who will be admitted to the general population will be required to undergo a close visual inspection. While undressed, Justice Kennedy wrote, adding that about 13 million people are admitted each year to the nation's jails. Yeah, we have more people in prison than any other country, including China. In fact, we have double the number of China. Double. China is 1 billion, 300 million, and our country has double the people in the jail. In Williamson County, north of where I live in Austin, they arrest you when a videotape, back when they still had video stores or, or CD, a DVD, is two days late, you get arrested. Library books are a week late, you're arrested. I mean, you might as well move to Nazi Germany in 1942 to live in Williamson County. And why is it like that? Because it's a retirement community of totally naive Americans who think this is still 1950. And they believe the cops and the system, whatever they tell them, even though the cops and the mayors and all of them in Williamson County, it's constantly getting caught dealing drugs, their wives, kids dealing drugs, killing people, robberies, total corruption, murdering people in the jails, every form of corruption, one of the worst counties in the country. But they all wear suits and ties and are white and act conservative, so those old people go on those juries and they just send everybody straight to jail. The feds completely run Williamson County. They love it. It's a complete joke. It's come out that prosecutors in Williamson County are famous cases. No people are innocent, including folks who didn't even have criminal records. It's one thing if you set up somebody who's got a bunch of prior convictions. That's evil. That's wrong. They will send people to death row who they know are innocent. When they have DNA and witnesses 100%, they will fight 
for 20 years to keep somebody on death row. And it all comes out, and the town just goes, oh my gosh, you put innocent people in. And all these old people literally fall down on their knees and begin worshiping evil. I mean, they love it. It is a sycophantic worship center, worshiping injustice, worshiping corruption, worshiping the persecution of innocence. And Williamson County, Texas, is the model for this entire country and this entire world. And so, but, but again, they leave the... Old people alone in Williamson County. That's the taxpayers that the leeches sit on top of. And then anybody else that crosses through there is ripped apart by hyena-like creatures. I mean, Williamson County on record will pull you over. I don't care if you're a 65-year-old woman and open your purse and you've got prescriptions on the pill bottles. And it's heart medication. You're going to jail. I mean, because it's a criminal enterprise. There are many areas in Texas, this has even been on national news, where the police pull people over and openly rob their purse of money. And it's almost always old women. And they say, why do you have $2,000? Well, Sonny, I don't trust banks too much. I'm going to visit my family. Well, we're taking that. And then they have the police on CNN defending it. No judge, no jury, no arrest, no nothing. We're going to impound your car and take you to jail unless you give us this money. And then I'm anti-police to talk about this. Uh, here's another one. TSA brags about creating imperious security team in a job hiring um, ad they posted. And help wanted. And it is uh, titled domineering in a haughty manner, dictatorial overbearing. That's what imperious means. And if they're not imperious... I don't know what is imperious. This is a, this this whole government foreign bank run is a bunch of imperious wannabe bosses, wannabe tough guys sucking off the public with a bunch of naive people groveling to authority. America wasn't founded on groveling to big government. Martin in Colorado, we're going to you in a moment. Then Patrick Brad, Kevin, Paul, and others, wide open phones in the next hour, interspersed with some key reports I'm going to get into. But I want to finish up with this since I just mentioned it. When you don't have due process, when you have government that claims it's taking all your rights away to protect you, look out, tyranny is on the way. And now we see it manifesting. TSA brags about creating imperious security team. Craig List ad deleted after federal agency caught describing their role as dictatorial. The ad posted by the Transportation Security Administration in search of employees for an Ann Arbor airport brags about the federal agency's mission to create an imperious security team. The word imperious means domineering in a haughty manner, dictatorial and overbearing. Yep, and now the government is going to be arresting you. Well, they already are. It's now commonplace. Just five, six years ago, people were blown away by people being arrested for no seatbelt. Now it's becoming standard procedure. Mama, grandma, grandpa's going to learn how to get put in the jail. And I saw an article where a veteran and a peace officer retired. The neighbor saw a gun and so called the police and the police came and shot the guy. I mean, it's just, it's crazy the type of stuff that's going on. Or that case out in California where the cops beat the homeless guy to death for no reason. And then the surveillance tape got released and the police did get indicted. Well, they have to be indicted. Why would you break the neck and beat some homeless guy who didn't do anything? I mean, if you want to beat people up, go join a local karate or jujitsu outfit. Go join a boxing club. Oh, but you don't want to actually go in there and fight somebody that wants to fight as well. Believe me, I don't either. <laughs> I mean, I, I can get in a fight if I need to, but I'm not looking for it. My brain's already been shook up enough. I've had enough concussions for one lifetime. Again, don't play war with us. This is what governments always do. Don't play tough guy on my wife. Don't use your taser like it's a toy you can't wait to use on somebody. Just because you got beat up when you were in high school and now you want to show the world you're the boss with this Napoleon complex. And I'm not 
trying to get off again. I understand. It must be hellish to be a police officer because most of them I run into are great, hardworking people who really do care. I'll be honest. It must be horrible, though, to be around these other people. And you know what I'm talking about. The crazy-eyed-looking, power-tripping thugs who I see them and I immediately, like a dog, knows a threat. My hackles stand up on my back. We're going to go to break, come back, I promise. I'm going to take 20 phone calls. I'm not allowed to go to news until I take 20 phone calls, but the callers are always so good. We're going to go to break, come back directly to your calls. Briefly, uh, pay some bills around here. I haven't plugged anything in two hours. Uh, plus, these are great products I believe in. Uh, we've got the Tangy Tangerine, the best multivitamin mineral mix out there, bar none. You can get discounts by signing up to be a distributor and get it in bulk at InfoWarsTeam.com and get the best discounts there. Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, Rebound, and more. Hundreds of great products there. I totally endorse it. And you notice I've now lost 40 pounds, even though it's not a weight loss product. InfoWarsTeam.com, uh, really popular. Everybody I know that's trying it is amazed that, wow, Alex, this wasn't hype. No, I only push what I believe in. That's why I'm, it's taken me really a year to really start pushing it because I knew it worked for others, but I had to do it myself finally and see the results, and I have. You can see them on video if you're watching on PrisonPlanet.tv. Speaking of that, we always have 15-day free trials running for that, and uh, it's 15 cents a day total if you want to sign up and see the nightly news, the archives, and more. And the best gravity-fed filters that even have fluoride filters, if you want to get those separate, uh, that do remove it down to almost non-detectable levels. It's all available at InfoWars.com on the online shopping cart, the Pro Pure water filters, and a 10% discount for my list. All right, it's hour number three already. Bottom of the hour news blitz. I'm going to get more into the upcoming uh, film that's going to be released. That really exposes what the Illuminati really believes, and that's Prometheus. That's coming up. I've had people sending me uh, emails and texts and comments saying, was I paid by anybody, a Fox or whoever else is involved in that movie, Ridley Scott, to make that film? No. I did it because... Reading the synopsis of the film, that's what the Illuminati really believe. That doesn't mean I believe space aliens run things. I've had Christians saying, what, you think aliens made us? You're not a Christian. No. Watch the video. I said, that's what the globalists believe. And then I did a review of it to say we're being genetically engineered by the GMO, uh, not by off-world aliens. I use the hype of the film to expose GMO. That's the real point. I mean, that's my mission. It's real simple, and of course, 90 plus percent are positive commenters on there. Okay, I'm already digressing. I said I go to calls. Martin in Colorado, welcome to the airwaves. Thank you. Hey, how's it going, Alex? Thanks Good, sir. For having me on the show. Thank you. Hey, um, my dad's from the Czech Republic, um, and Europe is a, he's there a pre World War, or just after World War II and pre Berlin Wall. His family was millionaires. Uh, they were reduced uh, to nothing because their own government sold them out. Um, you know, you, you hear a lot of the news. You, you go through things personally, you know, just in your family's life. And I have, I mean, just to interrupt you, I want you to continue. We have some friends uh, whose dad uh, is, 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 is from the, quote, Czech Republic, but before when the communists ran it. And uh, he absolutely hates communists. He was an artist, and they wouldn't even let him do the, the ironworking art he wanted, which wasn't even political. It's total control over everything. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, my dad's father was a lawyer. They had summer cottages, castles, apartment complexes. Uh, they... Uh, these days, even if you're a millionaire or multimillionaire, even possibly a billionaire, it doesn't matter to these people because uh, you know I've been in business for a long time, and you, you meet some interesting people over a scope of work. But when you meet people that want it all, it'll it'll never be enough. But the good news is you always have patriots that come up, um, and and or you just change your life. My dad just ended up moving here. He was in the military there. He got intel that the Russians were going to invade um, to take over their country. Uh, he got up the night before, said he's going to Paris with a friend. 
players, but basically it was very bad. It was never the same in that country. It's much more beautiful now that they rebuilt. But the funny thing is they had to go through so much and lose so much over other people that deal. I just don't. Well, again, the ultra-rich Rothschilds always fund communism because they want to destroy the middle class and new wealth that creates the wealth. See, a lot of poor folks don't understand this. A lot of rich people brings everybody up because rich people are going to hire you to do things and you're going to become wealthy. But when you shut down the rich people, it's over. But see, the notice Warren Buffett, all of them, the ultra-rich Bill Gates... They all want higher taxes because they're exempt from taxes. They are in tax-free foundations. They're called philanthropists. That, the, 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 that's all a propaganda hoax for them not paying taxes. They want your money. They want, it's, it's what it's all about, shutting down their competition and, and, and telling people everything they've got to do and how they've got to live. I mean, people don't understand under communism, they tell you everything. What you can say, what you can think, what you can do. And it's all run by gibbering cross-eyed control freaks. Like the uh, professor that wants to put people in mental institutions that, that don't want to do her bidding. I mean, it's just, they're all a bunch of scum. Okay, let's move quick with open phones today. And then coming up, I'm going to give you the latest in science and technology, the Middle East and politics coming up at the bottom of the hour then we'll continue with your phone calls uh right now let's go to patrick in pennsylvania you're on the air patrick hi uh good afternoon alex thank you for taking my call i i know you don't like to hear it but you know thank you for everything you do you you are a true patriot and thank you just for everything initially i wanted to make a statement about that trayvon trayvon brown case down in florida but just listening to you talk about this police brutality and corruption, you know, it happens everywhere. And these cops do whatever they want, and they get away with it. And they are, like you said, harassing old ladies, young kids, you name it. Where I live, I live in a small town. About a year and a half ago, this cop in the middle of the night was driving. He had someone who was suspected of a DUI in the back seat, And he was driving up the road on the highway around 100 miles an hour. because The guy refused a breath test, so he was going to take him to get a blood test at the hospital. The cop crashed into a truck and hurt the guy, the prisoner, the so-called prisoner in his back seat. The state police, the local police, everyone was saying, oh, this is a complete accident. Um, the paper said this is horrible, but no one questioned why was he going 100 miles an hour? Why didn't, his, why didn't he have his lights on? And then about a year later, after it cost the taxpayers thousands of dollars for him to get better and buy a brand new police car, he went back to work, and a newspaper just said, oh, you know, we're so happy to have them back and back. But that type of mentality is just so pervasive. These cops do what they want, and people don't question Well, that's it. Look, look. It, 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 but a fish rots from the head. You've got Obama caught in all these crimes, giving billions of dollars uh, in energy contracts to, to people that never even build one machine because they're his donors. They give him 100000 they get $500 million back, literally. Uh, there's Corzine, there's the shutting down the power plants so their competition can't compete. Uh, there's all of it. I mean, you just start listing all of the crimes and the corruption and the fact that they don't even get in trouble now. That lets you know that the critical mass is being reached where there's so many crooks in government that it's a free-for-all. It's a total and complete free-for-all. It's like the... Um, Rock and roll song, Ted Nugent. I got me a rock and roll band. It's a free-for-all. I mean, they are going crazy. But it's not some free-for-all having fun playing, you know, guitar. It's, it's, it's going crazy on people. And this psychosis, the tyrants always start believing that what they're doing is for the greater good. And they're going to keep the public in line. But, I mean, take the New York police. Their union repeatedly in the last few years has put full page ads in local papers, New York Post and other places saying, look, we don't want to give old ladies tickets for sitting on a bench more than five minutes or a pregnant woman for sitting down. There's some benches where it's only like five minutes. We don't want to arrest people for putting cat litter in the trash can. We're told to do this and that we're told to, you know, basically double. This was a few years ago, our quota. Then they lie and say, oh, there's no quota. 
but it, it's now been on record in many police departments, copies of even memos ordering a quota. And so it's about revenue generation. My point is it's all being siphoned off to the globalist bankers who sit on top of over a thousand trillion. More money than they could ever buy everything on the earth over four or five times. That's why they want to create a depression to make you sell. They want it all, even though they'll never even see it or know it. It's, it's just, it's, they've all, all tyrants seek after the get out of jail free card, the bulletproof card, the too big to fail card. I appreciate what you've said. Thank you so much. And, and that's what tyranny is. It's a too big to fail in government and corporate corruption because so many people are tied into it that none of them want it to go down, even though it's bringing us down. Do you see what I'm saying? It's almost like they're standing up on a deck of a ship and they're down below knocking holes in it and water's coming in. And we're saying the captain's crazy. He ordered holes be knocked in the bottom of the boat. But because the, the, the officer's got his uh, crew, the captain has his other officers and crew, even as the ship's sinking, they're like, it doesn't matter. We're up here on the poop deck. And we're the bosses. And you're like, but you knocked holes in the boat. Doesn't matter, we're the bosses. But you're crazy. We're the bosses. It's like that famous newscast where the TSA person's going, I have power, I have power. You seen that video? M multiple times they go crazy and announce they're God and strip down naked and start running through the airports. I'm not kidding. Type in TSA agent runs through airport naked declaring they're God. It's actually happened twice. And you're like, well, how could two people, what, one, I think it was in Maryland, the other was in uh, L.A.? One, I think, was in Baltimore, the other was in L.A. I'm going from memory. This happened the last few years. And you're like, well, why would two separate ones do that? Because it's a certain typecast. It's a certain psychological profile that is gravitating towards wanting to wear a uniform and wanting a TSA-style job. I mean, you think bad people sometimes gravitate towards law enforcement. I mean, you get Dudley Do-Rights that do it as well. And they just get compartmentalized. Yeah, you go deal with the kidnappings and bank robberies. We'll deal with the narcotics trafficking. Wink, wink. We'll live in the $2 million house, and you're so dumb, you won't ask why we live in that on the salary. You know, wink, wink. That's how this works. And so I'm already digressing. Uh, let's talk to Brad in Michigan. You're on the air, Brad. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, I wish I had a little more time to talk because I'd like to mentioned something about the invasive species findings in Michigan. I, I believe that's just setting the stage for eventually naming humans as an invasive species on this Well, planet. no, no. All the big environmentalists have said our animals, our dogs, our cats, our horses, our cows are all invasive species, and they want them taxed and then banned. Uh, I, mean, I mean, people are like, oh, well, that'll never happen. No, they run things. We'd never have socialist health care. We'd never have uh, big government. We'd never have gun control. We'd never have open borders. Five years ago, sheriffs would say that the feds were giving uh, illegals get out of jail free cards. Now it's admitted. See, I mean, it, it, it's all happening. Sorry, go ahead. What I'd really like to talk about, actually, is what I called about is to talk about the awakening in general. Um, I feel that our greatest tool... Our greatest weapon against the globalists is to wake other people up and to make them realize because it's our numbers that will save us. And I spend a lot of time trying to wake people up. I, I've, I've gone through a lot of frustration from it because I tend to sometimes get angry that people can't see what's right in front of them. Um, one of the problems with that is um, through that I've learned good tips on how to wake people up, and I'd like to share some of them with your, with your listeners. Um, the first thing I find is if I get people talking about liberty as they define it and what's important to them, their eyes seem to open very quickly, and I can start to waken them to the things that are important in, in defending our liberty, and most importantly, to remain calm. I, get, I have days where I get fired up, as fired up as you do, and I know that that's the time I need to call somebody else that's already awake and talk to them, because once I start getting fired up talking to somebody, I can see them shut off. They shut off instantly. 
And one of the most important things is to follow up because when people wake up, they seem to go through these stages where first they get angry and they need somebody to talk to and I have to be there for them. I have to listen to them and let them get that frustration out. But the other thing is, is I've seen repeatedly where somebody wakes up and then they get on the, they get on that ledge and I have to talk them down because they they, they see it as so hopeless to fight against these people. And if you let people go past that point, they shut off and never come back. And it's really important for people to think about these things when they're trying to wake somebody up. Because if you really want to help, you have to not scare people away. I'm listening to you. I, that's 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 it. I, I just I, I wish people would would really spend time talking and I, I would like you to spend some time talking to people about how it is a constructive way to well, awaken people and usually their own their own knowledge it goes off on its own exactly let me let me say this to you I spend a lot of time trying to figure out how I can do a better job and I'm able to apply some of that but generally um, it's just a frontal assault trying to shock people who are in deep denial out of that and I've been extremely successful but I can hear that you have passion you have confidence and I also hear compassion in your voice when people try to wake folks up from I know this sounds kooky but did you know then that's a cue for them to laugh at you but when you approach it from a loving serious position you can really get through to a lot of people I can hear that in your voice and I think what you are doing personally, I agree, on a one-to-one -one basis, it is better to have the smooth approach via a medium like radio, especially, which is a very hot media. It's, 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 I'm very effective at that. Never tried to do it on purpose, but it's a hot medium. TV, not so much, but it still telegraphs. But it's different strokes for different folks. Different ways of reaching out are going to affect different people different ways. But I tend to agree with you that the old frontal assault is not the best way in person. It's best to say, hey, you think everything's going well in the world? Uh, do you think, um, I mean, do you like the things that are happening? Where do you think things are going to be in the future? And most people instinctively go, wow, I don't think things are going to be too good in the future. Whereas in the 50s and 60s, people did. They were demanding something better because they'd always had seen things getting better. Now, people are more, I just want to keep what I've got because they instinctively know things are in deep trouble. Now, you're also waking people up now in a time when it's easier to wake them up because other people, and I'm sure you did as well, hit the barbed wire a long time ago. People used to be in such a trance that the two by four upside the head was the most effective. I want to give you one more minute when we come back to finish up. We'll just continue with calls. These are great calls today. And, and I do have some reports we're going to get to. You know, the reason I'm so freaked out is that government is engaging in crimes at every level and, and not getting in trouble. And there's so many crimes, I can't even keep track of it. What is going on that we don't know about? Who's watching the watchers? And I was just thinking about this during the break. How government now admits that it's listening and watching and recording phone calls, faxes, emails without warrants. And that's just the way it is. Every time they do that, it's a felony. In England, it's still illegal. And the government has now come out and said, doesn't matter, we're recording everything and the BBC and London Telegraph they all report it like it's a good thing like by the way we listen and record everything we listen to and record everything everything and I've gotten so conditioned I think I flashed that article on screen yesterday and didn't even talk about it. In fact, will you guys pull that back up for me? The London Telegraph headline, I think, was something like government to record and uh, everything. And then it's got people saying, this is unbelievable. This is, uh, they had a government minister saying this is six million times worse than it is now. That was one headline. 
this surveillance six million times worse than it is now. And then another headline was worse than 1984. And people are like, well, what do I have to hide? Let them listen. They're going to make stuff up, folks. They, they want to be able to say they're listening to you and surveilling so they can just put whatever they want on your computer. And again, you think I like going up against these people? You think it's fun? It's just, it's got to be done. That's one reason I've realized I go into a rage all the time. Because instead of being afraid, I get mad at them that I'm having to confront them. I, I, I get so disgusted with the globalist. And then the general public who's letting all this happen, I really get mad at them. Because you know what? We do have a great country. This is a great country. It's full of great people. We have such prosperity. And I see my future and my children's future and my wife's future going down a rat hole, and it makes me mad. Every time I see good things, it makes me mad. You understand that? Every time I look at my daughters who are so innocent and pure and full of electricity and so innocent, and I think about how bad this world is. Every time I look at my son who is so good and strong and smart and loving, and I, and I think about the stuff out there in the world, it just makes me sick. And I know parents know what I'm talking about. It is, and it, is, it is painful to my heart. I feel it in my heart. And I just wish people weren't so bad. I wish people, but you know, I can deal with a robber or a kidnapper or a killer. But who I can't deal with is big, powerful mega corporations and governments who are above the law. And that's the most dangerous thing in history. Governments killed more people than anything else in history, unnatural cause. And we're all in grave danger. And if you don't know that, you aren't paying attention. And the danger is intensifying by the minute. My gut is so on edge right now that it is torture. I mean, this morning I shot like two or three videos that I haven't had time to upload, you know, where I was just covering different topics. I, I, I cannot, and again, I know I'm talking about myself here. I know you're going through this as well. So it, it's all I can do is talk about what I'm experiencing, and hopefully it, it can give people a window into their own minds to really focus on these issues and think about where is this going? What will we put up with? Because if stuff is this bad today, what is it going to be a month from now, a year from now, 10 years from now? Think of, think of 20 years ago. Would you have ever imagined all of this that's currently admitted would be going on? No, you would think that, that was the wildest science fiction book ever. And now it's just there. And there's this sense of, oh, well, that's just the way it is. Well, the people running things aren't just going to stop at some certain point. Because if they do, there's more evil people that will replace them and go even further. And then those that are even more evil that will go further. It's a progression. It's, it's an absolute race to the bottom. Just like NAFTA and GATT are a race to the bottom. Economically, Ross Perot was right. Evil, tyranny is a race to the bottom. All right, I'm going to come back. I'm going to take five more calls from Kevin. Paul, Matt, Robert, and Brad, and then that'll be it for calls since I got some other news I want to hit. Uh, but just be ready. I'm going to try to go to you quickly, which you know is impossible. But uh, we'll try our best here, Infowars.com. All right, Brad in Michigan, you were making some points earlier, and I skipped a segment before going back to you. Thanks for holding. Uh, finish up your point. Just one last thing is that the biggest thing that I always try to remember, and I think this is the major distinction between our movement and the globalist Luciferians that would have their way, is that they believe that 90% of life is worthless and needs to be eliminated. And we believe that all human life is precious and is worth saving. Well, more than that, that 90% thing is just what they teach their minions. Look, oh, we're only going to kill 80 to 90%. But if you get into the more internal documents, uh, they talk about how the last globalist will fight the, you know, the, the, the other globalist for the power. And that they're going to merge with machines and become gods. It's just total power trips. And we're like, well, that sounds crazy because a normal person is just happy to be healthy and to have healthy children and is happy to be outside on a pretty day. 
These guys like to tie women up in dungeons and torture them. And you're like, but that doesn't make sense because you're not screwed up like they are. And so good people are always blind to that type of evil. That's the problem is that good people just can't get their minds around just how wicked the wicked are. But, I mean, they want to get rid of almost everybody. Uh, and uh, they're delusional. Again, why would their lowest level minion, the TSA creature, why would they routinely go crazy and start announcing their God or ask women out for dates so they're going to plant drugs on them or grope women uh, or pull their shirt off uh, in, what was it, Amarillo and tell the woman she had beautiful, you know, uh, body parts and then they had to settle because it was on video? They're crazy. They're crazy. It's not that they're even that smart at many levels. It's that they're, they're willing to do the work to figure out how to take over. Because you don't have to then have beautiful art or have an incredible voice or be a great musician uh, or be a scientist uh, or be a, uh, you know, artisan or a, someone who has a skill. You don't have to do that if your skill is getting in charge. And so you've got this giant system of scum competing with each other to get into the positions of power. And so, of course, you've always got people on the bottom, the cops that don't want to be evil and don't want power, who actually got in to help people. They're never going to go up to the top because only the most oily, manipulative people, on average, are going to go to the top. Sometimes good people, for whatever reasons, get to the top, and then the system comes after them. That's why more and more, and I appreciate your call, as the system gets discredited, More and more, you are going to see people standing up and saying no. Because as that illusion drops, as that lie that the system's all-knowing, all good, and everybody else is bad, as that hoax implodes, they're going to think it's business as usual and get even more arrogant, which is now happening. And that's only going to serve to wake people up even faster. Uh, let's talk to Kevin in California. Kevin, welcome. Hi, Alex. Hey, buddy. Um... My name's Kevin Ruskoff, R-U-S-K-A-U-F-F. -F. Right. Right. Let me just name. stop you. Well, that, that's fine, and, I'm, and you sound like a real person. In the past, people will call up with a, with a name or number to harass somebody who they aren't, and for liability reasons, we really don't like to give people's full name. But there, you've given it on air. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. Uh, you can see how I've suffered uh, if you go to my YouTube. I got shot four times with a thirty-eight. Uh, the guy that shot me uh, said he never saw me with the weapon. Uh, he said I was only 10 to 12 feet away from uh, him when he shot me. Uh, 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 he told uh, the guy that, uh, 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 he said that the guy that uh, told him to shoot me uh, uh, had, the guy that told him to shoot me had blood on his hand, and, and the weapon that they said that I used had uh, blood on it. And uh, and I wasn't no, I was only bleeding from my uh, chest. Anyway, okay. I got so stopped. you've been wronged, and you're basically trying to call in to get attention to your case, so people can find out exactly what happened to you. Yeah, I got wronged because I have a, the Templar Handbook, and um, the, I have it in my possession. It's called Tactics and Monitor for Knights of the Order of the Temple, and. Uh, in it, it says uh, on page 315, paragraph 779, Constitution of the Grand Encampment of the, of the Knights Templar of the United States of America. In order, in order to secure greater unity, better government, and to increase the prosperity and influence of the orders of Christian Masonic Knighthood in the United States, this Constitution is ordained and established. Article 1, the Grand Encampment of whom of whom composed Section 1, the supreme legislative, judicial, and executive power of the orders of the Red Cross, Knights Templar, and Knights of Malta shall be vested in the Grand Encampment of Knights Templar of the United States of California, which shall consist of the following members, the Grand Master, the Deputy Grand Master, the Grand Generalissimo, the Grand Captain General, uh, Warden, Junior Warden Treasurer, Recorder, Prelate, so on and so forth. Then back here it says, honors paid by Templars. 
No, the order of the temple is, this is on page 553, the order of the temple is powerful in members' wealth and position, and honors paid to its officers and representatives should therefore be in keeping with the dignity of the order. Uh, the following named officer will be received with standards group uh, drooping. All officers executed. Okay, well, that sounds like some kind of Masonic gobbledygook to me. Uh, you think somebody would shoot you for this? I mean, I can go buy supposed Knights Templar handbooks on the Internet. I just searched it right now. I can buy, buy the rings, everything else. Why would, why would people shoot you over this? Well, because it says down here, the President of the United States is saluted as paragraph 1284. And, uh, Sir, I understand you're reading out of uh, something you think is a Knights Templar's handbook. Tell us how you came upon it and why you're saying someone shot you. Well, I came, up, I came across the book. Of, I met the uh, great-grandson of, of the guy who owned this book. The book was locked in uh, a, a gentleman, who came, a Freemason pharmacist who came over from uh, New York to San Francisco during the gold rush. The book was locked in his safe and inherited by his great grandson. Locked. His great grandson uh, drilled open the book, uh, uh, drilled open the safe, and inside the safe was the. Sounds like handbook. a great TV show. Why don't you shoot video of it and put it on the web? Because you know th there'd be no reason to kill you if this is some really super secret book. Uh, once you expose it, cover it. It got a shield. And inside the shield is a skull and crossbones. Yeah. Uh, that's great seal of the state of California. Uh, uh, two people on a horse and the uh, Iron Cross. And on page 415, the Iron Cross is the Templar Cross. Yes, and it I, is. And the Templar Cross is also uh, uh, under the name of the Iron Cross, the Cross of Prussia, the, the War Cross of France. They're all the same. No, no, it's a bunch of symbols. But, but I mean, I'm, I'm just asking you, uh, that's interesting. So what is the point of the call? You started out by saying you were shot, and now you've got this book. I mean, why were they shooting you? Well, I had gotten into an altercation with uh, a t couple of people, and uh, the dude went to his, gun, to his truck. Well, listen, listen, why don't, you, why don't you shoot some video of this and put it on YouTube? I really appreciate your call. Now, we always get some interesting calls like that, which you can't confirm one way or the other. Just expose it. Scan it. Put it on the Internet. I don't know how you know that, that they came to shoot you, and you think it's because of this, but you got an altercation with somebody. Pretty wild story. Uh, Paul in Texas. Paul, you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Alex. Uh, thank you for the beautiful segue you gave me earlier. Okay, so from what I understand, the plan here is to use all legal, nonviolent means to restore our republic, correct? Yes, to get our basic liberties recognized and to kick the criminal cabal out of D.C. Okay, well then, enough talk, let's do it. I propose an emergency legal fund money bomb uh, that you can set up uh, I will give you today a thousand dollars to set this off because right now there are so many freedom loving lawyers and investigators who would dearly like to join this cause but they may they may be in a position where they need to get funded now you reach millions of people Alex for a measly thousand dollars if we can get one million people to donate a thousand dollars like I'll do now That'll give you a billion-dollar war chest. Now, people like to be on the side of the winning team. Uh, the reason why I don't think you're finding a lot of people in government standing up and choosing the right side is because they don't believe the right side is going to be the winning team. At least That's not why right you now. morally have to decide to do the right thing, even if the odds are against you. That, that, that's the whole point of it. Yeah, I understand that, but, you know, people are human. I think if we show them that we are the winning team, you're going to find a lot of rats jump in the ship. Well, that's already started. Let me uh, listen. I agree with what you're saying, but I am not the best manager. I mean, I'm decent, and we got a lot of stuff going on here, and I can barely, you know, keep 30 something people going in the right direction. They're great folks, but that's a full time job. I wouldn't know how to collect that much money, I wouldn't know how to 
uh, deploy it. Uh, I mean, what legal funds? I mean, so we get some good court rulings. Sometimes you do get the courts to do the right thing, but that takes years to battle out. And on top of it, we have this big, corrupt, tyrannical military industrial complex run by foreign banks to enforce it. And they're telling Congress we're going to launch wars uh, without your approval. So they're already doing a bunch of illegal stuff and ignoring court rulings. Obama came out today, Paul watching an article, and basically implied they may just ignore the Supreme Court. Uh, I guess they've gotten the word that they overturned it. It's not going to come out until June, but the fact that he's starting to talk about maybe ignoring the Supreme Court, that's in my stack of news. It's at InfoWars.com. Really shows, I think, the Supreme Court may have done the right thing. Uh, so, uh, again, we are the biggest anti-New World Order operation out there. That said, we're ragtag. We only reach 15 million people a week. Most of those are sporadic. I do a money bomb to hire some reporters to get the equipment we need, and I raise $400,000. I mean, sir, we use the, about the lowest grade switchers we can, and we're trying to upgrade them right now, and they cost like $35,000. Uh, we use, uh, I mean, I just don't have the money, uh, and, and people, I don't think a million people would give me a thousand dollars. If a million people would give me a thousand dollars, I would put it in a tax-free foundation, uh, publicly with public books, and I could guarantee that 95% of that much money would actually be spent on legal defenses and things. But then we wouldn't pick every perfect legal thing and people say oh look this this lawyer they picked was bad or this was so see that's how they get the the uh, the public's been trained to not get involved themselves and then nitpick anybody that is involved uh so uh, but i mean that is a great plan but i estimate if we formulated a plan created something like that because i've thought of similar things um a little bit of this is cowardice. I say I'm not a coward, but at a subconscious level, I tend to hold myself back sometimes. Not even enough fear of death, mainly laziness. Because then I would try to do it all just right, and it's like, I don't want to take that on. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like I've already taken on so much that I do too much, so when I'm on air, it's not as effective if I did take off more time or didn't do the nightly news. You know, uh, But then I am overall, again, I don't want to talk about myself all day, but then we start becoming the focus of the debate. It's like trying to tell Ron Paul what he should do. Well, I mean, sure, he makes mistakes, but he's the one in the arena doing a great job with a 30-year track record. I told folks they were going to steal the election from him, but I said still support him to inject real ideas. Now people see that. He really did win Iowa. He won Maine. They stole it. After that, he really started losing because now folks thought, well, he can't win. I'll just go with somebody else. So now he's fading off, but staying in to inject real issues. So this is a process. My main mission, I mean, look, we get more traffic than MSNBC.com and CNBC.com combined. Go look it up. Compared to Alexa or, or wherever you wish. We get more traffic than Limbaugh and Glenn Beck sites put together. But, but all those guys make, I don't know, Limbaugh probably 20 times the money I make uh, or more. Uh, Glenn Beck 10 times, maybe 20. I think he may, I mean, it's it, it. So again, again, we don't have the big money support. We do just have the people out there. We are in the true grassroots sense, as big as a Glenn Beck or a Rush Limbaugh. In fact, globally, much bigger. But we can barely, you know, have a secure place for me to live and uh, pay the crew halfway decent and, and, you know, do everything else. So, again, it becomes a whole discussion. I agree we should probably do more. I just can't do it. When I get off the air here, I am going to be exhausted for about 30 minutes. Um, and uh, so, I mean, I, I just don't think at the end of the day, I have to do everything. Uh, plus, I don't think we could raise a billion dollars, sir. Well, delegate. I mean, if you don't have the time because you're busy, I understand that. We all have, you know, uh, X number of things we need to do, and there's only 24 hours in the day. But if we're going to do this legally, we have to do this. I mean, you can't expect any corrupt organization or group to investigate themselves. I mean, it's pointless. Well, in 60 we seconds, give me a snapshot of your strategy. 
Well, I think, first of all, we should... Uh, uh, I, I don't know any other choice but to use you as the hub of this because you're already in the front line here. Um, but we need to find out how many people are willing to participate in this. Uh, who are the legal people? There's a, a, a police officer who's investigating Obama's birth certificate doing a fantastic job. Well, why has he got to just work completely on his own in a vacuum? How many other people like that are willing and able to uh, assist in this program, but they don't know where to start because there's no way we can group, you know? The, the enemy here is already well-organized, well-funded, and well-grouped. This is a very difficult job to do, but the job still nevertheless has to be done. Not only do we have the, uh, the right to do it, we have the obligation to do it, and we've got it in writing. We have the American Constitution that demands we do this. We've got an NDAA bill which gives us the right to go get them, They've even got the FEMA camps ready for us to go put them in. I hear you. We'll have to talk about it more. It's an intriguing idea. I, I just think if I did it all right, I could probably raise, if I put a plan together and demonstrated, I could probably raise $50 million. But money isn't everything. People power is everything. We'll be back. More calls straight ahead. All right, this is some heavy knowledge that I'm going to dish out and lay on you right now. All right, you are go. One reason that I've never grown this operation really big, and I could have, and launched a lot of business systems to fund it, is I've always instinctively known that if I get too big, I can't stop infiltration. And take Tommy Chung. Tommy Chung selling marijuana pipes all over the country, making tens of millions of dollars of Cheech and Chong fame, his son running it in a whole other state from him. Totally legal, but a few counties where it's illegal. The feds tried for not one, not two, not three, but four years to order and have it shipped to that county. Because then they could claim it was some interstate commerce thing that it was going across state lines to commit a crime in another state, making it federal. They, they never did it. So the feds got one of their operatives employed at their facility to mail the bong, the uh, weed head pipe, to that state and city. And then they had a kept jury put him in jail for it. Now, regardless of what you think of marijuana, the point is that's really d d d illegal. It's a setup. And I could go on for hours with confirmed cases of where this is done. This is standard operating procedure. Now, obviously, if I'm trying to stay out of trouble with these people, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. So it's a balance. And I just go with my gut, go with my discernment. You know, I say the hardcore things that have to be said and leave it up to God. But I trust in God, but tie up my camel, as the old Bedouin saying says. Another writer in more recent times said, uh, pray to God, but roll away from the rocks. Was that Hunter S. Thompson? Okay, so I just, I can't manage anymore. People are always telling me what I need to do and all this. And a lot of it's good ideas. It's just that. At a certain point, folks, it's up to you. And it was Hunter S. Thompson said that. Uh, but, but let me lay the heavy knowledge on you. Here's the definition of strategy. We'll put it on screen. Just scroll down for me so I can read the definition. Thank you. The science and art of employing political, economic, psychological, military forces of a nation or group of nations to afford the maximum support to adopted policies in peace or war. A variety of or the instance of use of strategy. A careful plan or method. Now, I use strategy. Doesn't mean my strategy is the best. The enemy uses stratagem. Put stratagem on screen, please. An artifice or trick in war deceiving and outwitting the enemy. A cleverly contrived trick or scheme for gaining an end. Skill and ruse or trickery. 
Now, here's the, here's the data I'm about to give you right now. How you become corrupt as a nation is to begin to use stratagem against another enemy that's using stratagem. It's like using the ring of Mordor. You always end up using it against your own people. You use lies, deception, evil. You argue, well, camouflage is a lie, you see? And then it, and then it expands on from there. And in that discussion is how do you be, fight evil without becoming evil? Because obviously you've got to use some deception, like camouflage. That is a deception. In fact, when it was first employed in World War I, folks thought it was really immoral. Because they said it would lead to what we have now, becoming evil. Guarding the truth with a bodyguard of lies. It never works. And if you look at our government, everything it does is a stratagem, and the training is to fight an enemy. So we are the enemy. The government has made us the enemy because the government's run by foreign banks. It's not our government. You understand? This is not our government, and it treats us like the enemy because it's the enemy.